Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are in Unit 5, Chemical Reactions. You are on page 2. Please copy down uh, your notes, fill in your notes for me. I will pause for a moment, but you're going to need to pause as long as you need to to copy in these notes if you are not with me um, in person or with a live Google Meet. Pause as needed. States of matter represented by chemical equations. So you're going to see these things potentially at the end of a chemical formula. Okay. Notice that we have solid, liquid gas. And we have gas can also be an arrow pointing up. Aqueous. That's pronounced aqueous. Most people pronounce it aqueous. Ions in solution. So that's a plus or a minus that is dissolved in solution. This term is precipitate. You might see it as a down arrow or a PPT. These are solids formed in the solution. So you have liquids. And when you put the two liquids together, you have solid particles floating in those liquids. You can centrifuge, that means spin the test tube really quickly, and then you would see those things separate. Here we have reactants go first, and then the arrow points to the product. I like to say the arrow points to the product. Uh, you'll know it's time to put your arrow in when you hear words such as forms, makes, yields, produces, or decomposes. If there's other words, we'll add them as we go. But you're going to normally see the what we call the reactants. Okay, we normally say the reactants are on the left-hand side and the products are on the right, or the arrow points to the product, points products. A plus sign separates reactants from reactants or products from products. A arrow separates reactants from products. Okay, so a plus sign will be possibly be on the reactant side and a plus sign could, or plus signs can be on the uh, product side. So we can have a plus sign, one or more, on the left and plus signs plus signs, one or more on the right. They separate reactants from reactants and products from products. Now what separates reactants from products is the arrow. So the reactants are gonna be on the left, products are gonna be on the right. Coefficients are numbers that are appear in front of reactants and products. They're whole numbers that we put in front of each reactant and or each product. We never write a one, so if there's no whole number in front of them, we assume it to be a one. Okay, so you're going to fill in these missing uh, blanks. Balancing, okay. Uh, so balance polyatomic ions that appear on both sides of the equation. So what these are, are these the suggested steps for balancing chemical equations. They don't always work, but if you do these steps in this order, they work probably 90% of the time to balance a chemical equation. So balancing all their elements except for hydrogen and oxygen. So we first balance polyatomics if they appear on both sides of the equation. Then we balance all other elements except hydrogen and oxygen that are not involved in those polyatomics. And then we balance hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms, hydrogen atoms that are not part of the polyatomic and oxygen atoms that are not part of the polyatomic. So I say hydrogen's last, oxygen's dead last. Okay, we're going to talk and learn how to count atoms in a compound. First thing we'll do most of the time, if you have a polyatomic, you want to split, you want to split that out so that you can see the polyatomic. So this is going to be where we're going to split this. Whoa, that's really big. Let me try to fix that. Sorry about that. So we're going to split this here because here's our polyatomic. So what we're going to say is this has Cu and NO3, one Cu and one NO3 group. Now we also could break this down. Actually, we'll talk about that in a minute. We'll come back and do that next. Um, so here we're going to split this. We have Cr and we have SO4. Those are our two pieces, right? We have a mono and a poly. This is mono, this is poly. This two tells me I have two Cr's and this three says I have three of this unit. Up here, there was no parentheses. That's why there was only one NO3. Okay, so this one we have Ca and P. Both of them are mono. We have three calciums and two phosphorus. And then we have example four. Um, you're going to split this, right? And we got magnesium and we have SiO3. And we have one of these and one of these. There's no parentheses, okay? But this is poly, this is mono, this is poly. I have one Mg group and I have one SiO3 group. I do need to pause here because I neglected to tell you that you need to go to page 8 of your notes to see this. So go ahead and go to page 8 and then fill these in. Pause as needed. Okay, we're gonna finish. We're gonna go back up to the top now. We're gonna talk about, there are times when we can't use polyatomics 
and we got to break things down to individual atoms. So we're going to do that next. We're going to say this, this has Cu's, N's, and O's. This has one Cu, one N, and three O's. One Cu, one N, and three O's. Okay, this one has Cr, S, and O. Two CRs, three S's, because this is going to be distributed through, think of there as a one here, so three, and 12 oxygens, because four times three is 12. This is going to be the same, no change, because there's no polyatomic. And then here on this one, we have Mg, S, I, and O, and we have one, one, and three. So most of the time we're going to be doing polyatomics and treating them as groups, but sometimes we'll have to go with that. We won't be able to use the polyatomics. It just speeds it up if we can use polyatomics. If we can't use polyatomics, that usually is because you don't have the same polyatomic on both sides. But sometimes even when you have the same polyatomic on both sides, the problem is more complex and you cannot use them. So um, you got to just see if you can and hope for the best. I would say 99% of the time, if you have the same polyatomic on both sides, that's going to be the fastest method. However, sometimes we will have to break them down individual atoms like we did here. So either way could be a method for balancing. So now we're on example six. So example six, again, we're going to say that uh, we have Mg and Br. We have one Mg and two Brs, and it would be the same if we were going to break it down to individual atoms. Here we have Ba and PO4. PO4 is a poly. Ba is mono. These were both mono. So I have three Ba's and two PO4 groups. Why? Because the parentheses says I have two of that group. Now if I need it to, I could break this down into individual atoms. And that sometimes, pretty rarely, but sometimes is necessary. I have three Ba's. I have two phosphors. It's going to be distributed through. Think about like an algebra class. And I have eight oxygens. Here are my two units if I'm going to go through and do these as a mono. Think about splitting it, right? I have a lithium monatomic and carbonate poly. This is two of these and one. Two because of this two and one because there's no parentheses around the polyatomic. If I had to break it down into individual atoms, my results would be two, one, and three. And then this next example here, we have two monos. So all we have is CD and N. So we have three and we have two, and it would be the same because there's no way to break down them because they're already broken down. Okay. So now I would like to go on and do a few more examples. You're going to do some here in just a moment by yourself. Um, so we're going to split this. I'm actually going to switch colors for myself here. Um, and we're going to say that we have francium and chlorine. They're both mono one of each, so it would be the same whether I was breaking it down as polyatomics or not. Example 12, I have sodium and sulfur. Two sodium, one sulfur, and again, no way other to break those down than that. Now, this is our first time introducing a number. This is that coefficient I was telling you about. This means that when I start, I got Rb1, Br1, because there's one of each, and then I got a multiplying by whatever number's out in front. So there's five here and five here now total. So this one's even more complex. Let's start, the best way to start with these is think about starting with the units. Okay, we have two CRs and three SO4s, two and then three. The three out in front says I have to multiply. So that, oops, that's a three. So that'll be a six. There's a three out in front, so that's nine. Now, I could also break this down into elements, right? So this would be two chromiums, three sulfurs, that three gets distributed through, and 12. That's the base without the three in front. And then when there's a three in front, and we use these for balancing, we'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow, you're going to get six here, nine here, and 36 here. Okay, so that's how you do it with the number out in front. Um, this is the number out in front when you're doing it in pieces, polyatomic pieces, but when you have to break it down individual atoms, you have to also be able to do it this way. Okay, let's look at 15. So again, I'm going to break this down first into monos and polys because that's almost always the way we would balance. Sometimes we can't, as I've said. So I have three of these because of this three. I have seven NO2s, but there's a two in front. So then I know that this is going to be six and this is going to be 14. Now, if I break it down into individual, individual atoms, I have this compound has nitrogen, excuse me, manganese, nitrogen, and oxygen, 
And I'm going to start with the base of what I see without the coefficient, the number in front. So this is going to be 7 and 14. 3 because of the 3, 7 gets distributed through, there's a 1 here, remember, and then 14. So that would be the pieces without multiplying by the coefficient in front. Now I'm going to multiply by the coefficient in front. We get 6, we get 14, and we get 28. Okay. All right, so now we're going to try and split this. Uh, we're going to go through the pieces again, mg and bro3. So just looking without the coefficient, there's one mg and two bro3s, but the coefficient says to multiply through, so that's 3 and that's 6. Now, if I had to break this down into individual, individual atoms, I'd have mgs, brs, and os. I have one mg in the base, I have two brs, because that gets distributed through, and I got six times three times three times three. So this is three, this is six, and six times three is 18. So that's how you would do that. You try 17 through 20, pause the video, try 17 through 20, and I'll go over those in just a moment. Okay, welcome back. So now you're checking your answer. Uh, I'll go through these with you. So we have Cu and NO3 to start with it as groups of 1 and 1. 1 NO3 because there's no parentheses, but there's a 2 in front, coefficient of 2. So that makes two of these and two of these. Now if I broke it down into individual atoms, we have Cu, we have Ns and we have Os. Thinking about the base without the coefficient, I have 1, 1, and 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 would give me 2, 2, and 6. Going to this one, calcium and phosphorus, are there's no poly, so it's 3 and 2 times 3 is 9, because the 3 out in front, the coefficient is 6. And then going down here, we have MgSiO3. There's 1 and 1, but there's a, and there's a 1 out in front, so they would stay the same. Um, if I was breaking this down into individual atoms, I have 1 Mg, 1 Si, and 3 Os. Over here, thinking about it in its units, meaning monos and polys, there's two of these and one of these, but there's a four in front, a coefficient of four, so there's eight of these and four of those. If I were to break this down into individual atoms, sometimes that's necessary, the base is two, one, and four, times four, times four, times four, so this is eight, this is four, and this is 16. 16. Sorry, that's hard to read. Okay. All right. Reach out if you have any questions.